Welcome to the star. Hi, Mama Jane. Happy New Year, everyone. Today we're gonna start a new series because 2021 means new. With our first guest, Pina Grease, talking about news around the world. Let's go. The first article is about COVID 2021 in January. Well. Um, things are going in some ways as expected. I mean, naturalistically speaking, it's very simple mathematics to figure out what's going on on the overall level. And it's kind of what's happening, at least in the United States, because there's no intervention. It's spreading more or less uncontrolled. Um, a mutation is expected. This, the, these strains of viruses mutate quite frequently, which is how we got into this problem. That's why there's been warnings for decades that we need to be careful. I think what's more interesting than these expected things is the reaction to it. Like, when you have a normal task that you have to do, and somehow you can't do it, it indicates there's a different problem than the task itself. Like, if you have to wash your dishes, but every time you do it, oh, my scrubby doesn't work, I don't have a good smelling soap, oh, my counter's dirty, I don't have space, and you make arrangements and then you can't do it, there's something wrong in your head. It's not the task. And isn't that what we see here? We don't want to wear a mask. Wear a face shield then. I don't want to wear a face shield. Well, then find other arrangements. This is a big problem. You're ruining everything. Okay, okay, okay. You know, we'll make another accommodation. Just stay inside or whatever. And people can't do it. They always find something wrong. They aren't okay with a the lockdown. They're not okay with simple, normal, hygienic practices. They're not okay with the vaccine. Every time we fix a problem they're not okay with to find a solution, they move. That indicates a psychological problem on a grand scale that people don't talk about. So I think that's a much more interesting problem. It shows that, at least in the United States, there's something deeply unsettled in the typical psyche. It probably has to do with many generations of huge social problems that aren't addressed. They're not really brought up. They're always pushed back down. You were a superhero. How would you fix mm -hmm. this problem? Oh, if I had superpowers, um, they probably wouldn't call me a hero. It would be more like a V-type arrangement. So, but... V-type? Like, a, yeah. Maybe villain. So the point ah, is... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, there's, I mean, short of like some sort of cataclysmic destruction of human subjectivity, I don't think there's a lot that one person can do. It's a problem of synchronized behavior. So many people are sort of shaking into the same direction that if you do anything to any one person, it doesn't really disrupt the pattern. So when these types of problems happen, it's because they've encountered some problem they can no longer resolve. And so it's going to have to form a new like condition, like an underlying world that they'll enter into. But it's kind of a traumatic event. As a leader, were I like some kind of civic leader, I think the important thing to do is, uh, how do we say it, like, they have a very strong, consistent idea. I think Fauci has that, the, the, the main doctor, what is he, a, a surgeon general of the United States, where anytime people talk to him, he's like, use hygiene, wear your mask, get vaccinated when it comes out. Hmm. And you have to be willing to stay that when things get crazy, like when people show up with guns or when they start screaming about about tyranny or this person being worse than Hitler or any other of the very bad despots that they don't know about because they're educated in America, they it should be the same response. No, you're being a child. 
you must get your vaccination, you must be careful not to spread it, you must isolate yourself when you're sick, you must be a hygienic human being. And then eventually we will pass through it, but until then we don't really know what the next direction will be. I'm afraid it's scary, it is tumultuous, but that's the nature of it. The good news is once we pass through it, we'll all be like, oh, of course it went that way. It couldn't have gone any other way. But until we get there, it's going to seem like everything is a disaster. This is human perception. Actually, I'm a total... Being... Hmm? Yes, no, sorry, you can keep going. I'm basically a total enemy of human subjectivity. Um, the subject is the domain where the ego attaches to things, I think, more than other domains. And it's led to a world where human beings don't understand that they are also the objects they perceive. And people who, I think the Japanese understand that a little more than, say, the Americans, um, at least on some libidinal level. But if I had a superpower, it would be to destroy human subjectivity. I'm afraid that means life as you know it would end. But... Actually, you know, we have been mm -hmm. we have been lucky, you know, because think about what if this virus was actually only one, but two virus. So what if there were two different genomes of viruses coming out? And we have to find a cure for both of them at the same time, though. We were well, that being more still fucked. Already the case. <laughs> wow, language. They Ah oh, sorry. I mean there there are there are still many very strong um biological conditions that we still need to work on besides the coronavirus. I mean people like to talk about the deaths because I guess like the death is sort of the goal of getting sick. Uh it's deaths. like an end point. Right. Death. Death. Ah, death. Sorry. Yes. So but I mean the fact is that most people who get severely sick with it don't die. Um they say like one to three percent get uh, dead, but something like 20% have severe medical problems from which they recover, but which also damage them. So like with polio, we had a generation of people with crippled legs. We're probably now going to have a population with a lot of people who have crippled lungs or crippled hearts. Oh. So they're going to die early, like in another 20 years, maybe another 10 years they're going to need new treatments. Those will also have to be developed. Or the United mm. States way might be to just say, don't get sick. Um, yes, so we're already in that position. What's more important is we need a new social apparatus, the one that we want now that lacks, which would be able to organize our collective resistance to these things. Right. I mean, like if we're in a flood, we need people with boats to come and take people out of the water and put them onto dry land. We need people to build shelters for them and give them what human beings basically need, which is, mm. you know, food, shelter and clothing and a minimum amount of privacy and then some kind of social domain, which is easily ignored, but it's essential to human beings. Privacy is, you know, a willing exit from the social domain, but to have a willing exit, you also need to have a social domain. So those are the same need. You both have to have people you talk to and people and the ability to get away from them, to not be seen. So how does that work out? But if you had people jumping into the water saying, I don't need a boat, or the water is not filthy, or... I don't care if I drink the filthy sewer water. You know? <laughs> like, that's just nature mm. taking its course. You, you know, obviously <laughs> your flood relief efforts aren't going to work. So um, we, we need to recreate an apparatus that people will operate on. I just hope it won't be 
because all of the people who refuse to cooperate are dead. <laughs> so the, only the cooperative people are left. Ooh, oof, that's a rough one. Yeah, I can personally relate to it because I have mm -hmm. people in my family who wants to drink filthy water. Really? That's strange. Oh, yeah. Why don't I they just drink wine and them beer? To not do it, but. Eh? Why don't they drink wine and beer? Thank you, Pino, for your opinion. Today I've learned something new that we actually need a superhero to cure this disease around the world that's been out for... <laughs> Come on, Samurai oh. son. <laughs> I feel like every time, every time I talk to Roma in his head, instead of hearing my words, he just hears Pizza pasta, pizza pasta, ravioli, spaghetti. Pizza pasta, pizza pasta, rigatoni. Coladas in his My neighbor came to me and he said, My entire family has Rona. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, please give us a comment and subscribe our channel. See you in next video!